Hello everyone and welcome to a wonderful game from the 2017 edition of the Tata Steel Masters. It's a Richard Rapport versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, as this uh, was played in 2017 I didn't really follow uh, events uh, so religiously back then. I was uh, mostly covering if it was a nice game or two. Uh, so I've missed this one or maybe I've made it uh, but I've made so many videos that uh, <laughs> I have no idea really uh, but uh, since um, I rapport won the second leg of the FIDE Grand Prix uh, that uh, we've covered and you guys requested um, to, to see more of his games I thought that this one would be just perfect uh, because it's uh, well it's against Magnus Carlsen and it's just uh, well a masterpiece of a game so it's uh, not only a great game but also it's very important for the standings of the 2017 Tata Still Master uh, so let's dive straight into it and um, even if I did make a video on this game back in 2017 I would still remake it uh, because back then my videos were at only 30 frames per second as some of you guys know and also I pronounced uh, Richard's name uh, poorly so uh, it's best to, to even if I ma made a video I would remake it uh, so let's check it out Rapport has the white pieces and he starts with knight to f3 goes for the reti opening we have d5 and now b3 going for the very strong Nimsa Larsen attack. Uh, this is a game from round 8 uh, of the tournament if any of you guys uh, are interested and Magnus goes for bishop to f5 and this is a a uh, very standard way of developing knight to f6 is by far the most popular uh, but if you don't want to box your own light square bishop in you're going to first develop it then you're going to play e6 this is maybe uh, maybe looks a little bit greedy because you are uh, taught that okay maybe black needs the box in his light square bishop and then as the game develops you will uh, develop it uh, properly later on uh, but here uh, it's developed right away and then we're going to play e6 bishop to e7 or bishop c5 and so on so here bishop to b2 uh, putting the bishop to this strong diagonal and now e6 now we've uh, put the bishop outside of the cage and now we can develop our dark square bishop without boxing any of our pieces in so d3 and now h6 we have knight b to d2 and knight to f6 uh, and here of course striking in the center with c4 uh, where it seems like um uh, you, you maybe could capture this pawn, but as you know, you never capture uh, away from the center. You should always capture towards the center unless um, that's exactly what you shouldn't do. Uh, but uh, here it, it simply wouldn't make any sense because you would simply improve white's central pawn structure. So here, of course, just c6, strengthening your own central pawn structure. And g3 now, preparing to fianchetto the other bishop as well. Uh, so very uh, hypermodern approach uh, in, in this game against Magnus. Bishop to e7 and bishop to g2. We have castles, castles, and now knight b to d7. Uh, we have a3, preparing to grab more space on the queen side with b4. And Magnus, of course, stops this. He plays a5. And now uh, this is, uh, although some of the moves were somewhat rare, we've uh, transposed uh, to a pr pretty standard position. And now usually people play queen to c2. Here you connect the rooks this way or, or even rook to a2 is an idea uh, this was also very popular where you could shift your queen over to a1 and do, then uh, try and do a lot of damage using this diagonal but Rapport tries something uh, completely different he plays queen to b1 it's not completely different it's still uh, you know uh, has the same ideas in mind uh, but now after Carlsen's bishop to h7 uh, Richard goes for b4 uh, there are a couple of games or rather three other games where bishop to c3 was played pretty much with the same idea of playing bishop c3 queen to b2 and grabbing hold of this diagonal but a rapport goes b4 now and it's uh well it's a very interesting as uh uh, what, what, what can what can Magnus do here? Well, Magnus plays, okay, A captures on B4. It, this is not a forced capture. You could also just ignore it, uh, and the game just continues. The other rook will come to C1, the bishop will come to C3, uh, queen to B2, and so on. But Magnus decides to trade. He plays captures, captures, and now queen to B6. He puts pressure on the B6 pawn, but the rapport just defends it with bishop to C3. But now this is the fun part. The bishop and queen are guarding the B4 pawn, and the bishop and queen are attacking the B4 pawn. However, you could eliminate one of the defenders of the pawn by uh, playing rook captures on a1 the queen would move and then you can capture on, on b4 uh, so this is exactly what happens in the game magnus captures on a1 we have queen captures and now bishop captures on b4 and you can't uh, attack the bishop with rook to b1 because we're just going to capture on c3 and now attack white's queen also and after let's say queen captures on c3 we can just go back at the end of this very nice line black is up a pawn 
So instead, after bishop captures on b4, Rapport recaptures, and now queen captures on b4. But now comes rook to b1, and now as the queen has to move, we are going to recapture with rook captures on b7. And okay, this is what Magnus wanted, the queen to d6. We have rook captures on b7, and now uh, e5. Magnus says, all right, you have an active rook on b7, but what is it even uh, really doing there? I have a beautiful center here, so what's your counterplay? Uh, well, Rapport plays d4. And now what can Magnus play here? The problem is if you grab more space with e4, then we can put our knight on e5. The queen on a1 nicely controls the e5 square. So black can never really capture the knight. If you capture, then we just capture back and then black loses a piece. So that's not happening. So after d4, Magnus plays e captures on d4. And now we have knight captures on d4. And now uh, again, Magnus continues in a, in a very interesting fashion at, at pawn to c5. And now uh, should the knight move, maybe we can grab more space with the d4. Uh, however, if you play knight to b5, for example, we can just play queen e6. And now, yes, you are attacking the d5 pawn, but Magnus will be attacking the e2 pawn. And now after you defend this, then uh, Magnus can even play something like d captures on c4. Now the pawn on c4 is defended. And uh, okay, it's a double uh, past c pawn, but it's still a double past c pawn that Magnus is controlling. So it uh, should be very scary. So Rapport instead goes knight four back to b3. And now Magnus advances the pawn all the way to d4. So now we have bishop to h3, putting pressure on this knight here. So the knight on f6 can never move. Uh, and Magnus has to decide how to continue this position. Uh, there are many ways to continue this, many good ways, many, uh, well, bad ways. Uh, one thing is that you could go for rook to b8. You could uh, trade off um, uh, the, the rooks because your rook isn't doing all that much on f8, whereas Rapport's rook is incredibly uh, active on b7. Another thing you could do is just play g5 also very nice as now look at this your pawn is controlling e3 this pawn controlling f4 it's very unlikely that white will be able to push any pawns here and you will have just a, a very interesting game we might go into something like bishop captures on d7 knight captures and queen to a5 putting more pressure on the c5 pawn but black can just play a rook to c8 and everything uh, uh, is perfectly fine so this is, uh, th these are only some of the options. However, Magnus plays d3. He advances the pawn here and he says, all right, you either capture here, then I capture back and I've ruined your structure a little bit. Plus I have a, a, an incredibly active queen or you advance the pawn and then I have a pass pawn on d3. Uh, but this is exactly what Rapport does. Interestingly, you could also advance it all the way to e4. Uh, the knight here isn't really attacking the e4 pawn. Uh, the knight has to be guarding uh, the, the d7 knight because the bishop and rook are both attacking it. So, okay, e4 is possible. A rapport decides to play e3, and now we have knight to e5. As uh, by playing e3, the f3 square was weakened. Now the knight can come to f3 if the knight from d2 ever moves, uh, could be very dangerous. So, here, bishop back to g2. We need to, uh, well, uh, uh, get a better control of the f3 square. And now the position is incredibly dangerous. And for several reasons, Magnus should move the knight back. But um, uh, that's only for uh, for those of you who are interested in pausing the video after I show you what Magnus actually played. So here Magnus played rook to c8. He added another defender to the c5 pawn. And now the position is winning for Rapport, uh, incredible as it seems. But if you uh, take into consideration what I what I said uh, about what Magnus should have played, you should have an easier time deciding on what to play here. So feel free to pause the video and try to win this game for Rapport uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, uh, spectacular idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to f4. That's why you should have moved the knight, uh, because this way you allow the f4 pawn to be pushed with tempo. Now the knight has to move, and then you have e4, another incredibly threatening move, as then e5 is being threatened, and this will just be overwhelming for black. So Magnus goes knight e to g4. Uh, it doesn't matter if you go back to c6 or, or wherever. It's um, the, the same plan for white. So Rapport just plays e4. And now how do you, how do you stop white? Uh, you, you can uh, remember that we mentioned that the pawn on d4 controlled e3, and if Magnus played g5 controlling f4, white will pretty much be um, uh, unable uh, to, to push any of the pawns. But now, without doing so, without pushing g5, and with over pushing the, the pawn on d3, he actually allowed this beautiful expansion for Rapport, which is now causing him a lot of problems. So the idea is, how do you stop um, a move like e5? Let's say you play queen e6, you move the queen, now comes queen to a7. 
And again, what can black play? Let's say you play something, you play rook to e8, now comes rook to b6. You harass the black queen, and after queen to c8, you can play e5. And now the bishop again comes alive. It's just a very, very difficult position to play for black. Uh, also, you've taken away the f6 square from black's pieces, so you're also going to have to worry about h3 at some point. So let's say knight to d7, we play rook to c6. Chase the, chase the queen away, and once the queen moves, let's say queen d8, rook to d6. We're going to put pressure on the knight once black Black defends this, now comes h3. And where can the knight go? Uh, there is but one square, that is knight to e3, but now the queen uh, can pick up the knight if the c5 pawn moves. So now we're just going to capture on c5, and now we are adding a third attacker to the d7 knight, and also after this knight moves, the e3 knight will be... Uh, in, in, in a lot of trouble. So there's really not all that much you can do here. You can add another defender, for example, to the knight, uh, and now we just go for, for for trading everything. Captures, 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 and of course not capturing the queen, but queen captures knight on e3. Uh, white is up a piece and completely winning. So this, this is only something that can happen. I'm just showing you what a powerful idea this um, f4, e4 idea is and uh, how, how difficult it is for Magnus to tackle this. So you have to to give up something the question is what will you give up well magnus says all right i invite your e5 move in and i'm going to give up uh, my knight for two two pawns which is not all that bad i eliminated these two pawns i, I still have a pass pawn on d3 so i should definitely have chances here uh well Let's see, e5, uh, knight captures on e5, we have f captures on e5, and rook captures on e5. So it looks uh, very dangerous for Rapport as well. However, uh, here Rapport just plays rook to b6. He says, all right, you can capture my rook, but if you play that, I'm going to capture your rook, and here... Uh, black will not have uh, all that much counterplay. We're still up a piece and not all that much for black to do. So Magnus instead plays queen to e7, now threatening queen to e1 check to pick up Robert's queen, but now comes rook to b8 with check. We have knight to e8 and now comes bishop to c6. Here he attacks the knight, threatens rook, captures an e8, and he even allows rook to e1, but... Um, uh, if you don't play rook to e1, there is really not all that much to play because after rook captures on e8, it's just all over. So Magnus plays rook to e1, and now what do you play here? Well, of course, you know, as we've reached the position from the thumbnail, uh, Rapport simply picks up the rook. Queen captures on e1. Uh, we can even see that uh, once more in, in super slow motion. There we go. As I know how much you guys enjoy this, uh, a queen captures on e1. And now there's really not all that much um, uh, for Magnus to do. Uh, because if he, uh, if a rapper should block with, for example, knight to f1, then queen e3 check, and you quickly get checkmated. King g2, queen e2 check, king h3, bishop f5 check, and after the king moves, even g5 checkmate is possible. Uh, or if you try uh, after rook to e1, you don't have to block. You can play king to g2. It's still a very nice nice king hunt, we're just going to go queen to e2 check, again this bishop to f5 uh, with check, king h4, now even queen captures on h2 can be checkmate. So of course, uh, while this is all very nice, Rapport goes for the absolute best and only move, and that is queen captures on e1, Magnus captures on e1 with check, so... Uh, let's not forget this is with check, but the rapper just plays knight to f1, and he was in this position on move 33 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. Uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, to give you an example, let's say you try d2, uh, point being that if maybe a rook captures, we can capture with the queen and then bring another queen into the game, Rapport just picks up the pawn and there is really nothing here for black. And another thing that pretty much the only uh, thing left for you to do is king to f8, maybe try and play this end game. Uh, this is also impossible. Rapport very happily trades here, captures, 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 and captures, and now knight captures on c5. And now... Uh, okay, we just have to win the d3 pawn, and that's it. Let's say king e7, we're going to play king f2, king to d6, knight goes back. Now you can see the pawn and knight uh, completely cutting off the black king, and, uh, well, there's really not all that much. After we play this, king e3 is coming. Next, we're going to attack the d3 pawn with one of our knights, and it's game over. So, of course, after knight to f1, Magnus resigned the game, and what a spectacular victory for Richard Rapport in round 8 of the 2017 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. And uh, he didn't do all that great in the tournament, but he managed to ruin the tournament for Magnus, which is also very, very impressive. So, if you guys are interested, uh, these are the standings of the 2017 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. You can see that uh, the winner was Wesley So, uh, one full point ahead of Magnus Carlsen. Uh, had Magnus... Uh, 
uh, won this game against against Rapport, then uh, we would have tie breaks and they would go into a playoff. Uh, this way, Wesley wins it clear and uh, Rapport uh, definitely ruined the day a, a, a little bit for Magnus, but uh, he also... Uh, well, just played a very, very spectacular game, uh, finding all of this with Queen Capture Sun E1. Uh, Queen Capture Sun E1 is not a difficult move to find. It's a difficult move to find uh, all the way <laughs> where a rapport saw it probably uh, t 10 moves ago. Uh, but yeah, you can see that Wesley won, Magnus second place, uh, Ariban, uh, Aronian and Wei Yi uh, tied with 7.5, uh, Karyakin and Eliano with 7, uh, Giri with 6.5, Hare Krishna and Andrejkin with 6, and uh, Vytashek with 6, uh, Nepo with 5, uh, rapport with 4.5, and Lokvan Valley with three and a half. So as you can see, not a spectacular tournament, but he was still very young. This was uh, 2017, and you can see that uh, how far uh, he got now. He is uh, this close to reaching the candidates tournament. And of course, if he wins that, uh, then he will also get his chance to challenge Magnus Carlsen once again, but now not just for a beautiful game, but also maybe even for the title. It's still a long way to go. Of course, we'll see what happens in the, in the uh, third leg of the Grand Prix. And of course, then the candidates tournament but it's always nice to theorize a little bit like that uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it for those of you who haven't seen it i'm sure it's uh, uh you you guys are very impressed but even those of you who were following um, uh, the chess scene back in 2017 i think uh, it's a nice game to revisit so yeah once again hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank um uh, max zuravsky francis air jeffrey menser uh, abdul rahman el omari and the drawer alumot for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.